Hello and welcome to our recording of our worship service for Sunday, the 9th of May. I welcome you on behalf of the Kirk Sessions of Elmville Presbyterian Church and Knox Floss Presbyterian Church. There is a couple of announcements for you this morning. Herb Ritchie is now at Hillcrest Village Care in Midland. Please keep him, June, and their family in your thoughts and prayers. Second one, Reverend Lois Lyons was taken to hospital last night. She's expected to recover after some rest and be home again soon. Your prayers for her speedy recovery are requested by our family. Let's go worship God. Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 100. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. We are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his courts with thanksgiving. Bless his holy name. Give him thanks and praise. Let's bow our heads and hearts in prayer. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we are reminded today as we come together to worship you from many different places of how easily we take a mother's love for granted, of how we fail to express our thanks for the care we receive, of how we are slow to demonstrate our appreciation for the way we have been nurtured over so many years. We are reminded equally of how easily we take your love for granted, failing to thank you for the love you shower upon us and the joy with which you fill our lives. We have assumed that words do not need saying to those closest to us, that our thankfulness can be taken as read. We have believed love comes easily failing to recognize what it can sometimes cost. We have Im imagined because no thanks are asked, 
that no thanks are necessary. Gracious God, help us understand the joy we can bring through saying thank you. Not just today, but every day. Not just to our mothers, but to everyone. And not just to everyone, but to you. And help us through the act of thanksgiving to recognize how much we have to be thankful for. Merciful God, forgive us for so often failing to appreciate everything you have given us and the people that are all around us, for becoming more concerned with what we don't have than with all we do. Teach us to accept life in all its fullness, to celebrate the richness of the love all around us, and to share the blessings you have surrounded us with in such abundance. Lord Jesus Christ, you have blessed us richly. Forgive us that we fail to respond as we should. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And some words of assurance. May our almighty and merciful God grant us forgiveness of our sins, time to change our lives, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, my music is dedicated to my son, Ben Toffemeyer, who loved and encouraged my singing, and he now resides in Christ's heavenly home. Also, I sing for my heroic daughter, Sally, who's a full-time social worker and an awesome mom of three wonderful, beautiful granddaughters, Maya, Macy, and Mackenzie. And for my equally beautiful mom, I sing, and for my two wonderful grandmas, who loved hearing my mother and I sing duets. For, and for my great grandma, who kept the best lollipops in her kitchen jar. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to all. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he.
The psalm this morning is number 98. O sing to the Lord a new song, for the Lord has done marvelous things. God's right hand and holy arm have won the victory. The Lord has made known the victory and has revealed vindication in the sight of the nations. The Lord has remembered steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the sovereign Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, who is coming to judge the earth. The Lord will pledge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Reading from Acts chapter 6 verses 1 to 9, and chapter 7, verses 51 to 60. Now during those days when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Therefore, friends, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task, while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. They had these men stand before the of the apostles, who prayed, and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread. The number of the disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. Stephen, full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and others of those from Cilicia and Asia stood up and argued with Stephen. Chapter 751, you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in hearts and ears, you are forever opposing the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors used to do. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, and now you have become his betrayers and murderers. You are the ones that received the law as ordained by angels, and yet you have not kept it. When they heard these things, they became enraged, enraged, sorry, and ground their teeth at Stephen. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The Gospel reading is taken from the book of John, chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. 
I have said all these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the passages from Acts, we heard about Stephen's short ministry in the very early church. He was a deacon of the church. This was an office in my home church in Scotland. The office is still an integral part of the church. The board of managers, it's called now. So Stephen, the first deacon, as well as the first martyr, followed his shepherd all the way to the slaughter. He wasn't one of the twelve. He wasn't a showstopper or even suitable material for the morning paper headlines. He was a good, faithful man. He could be trusted to serve at the kitchen where the hungry were fed. And he did this without putting more food on one plate than the other. Could it be that had Stephen been a better deacon, he would not have become a martyr? Deacons were seen but not heard back in those days. They waited on tables, they packed bought lunches for those whose life was coming apart. However, when the disciples laid hands on Stephen, grace and power followed him and flowed all over him. And he was freed in the name of Jesus. And Luke, writing in the Gospel of the Holy Spirit, doesn't give detail. He was just another deacon who was to keep a low profile. If Stephen was meant to stir the soup and stew and not the Holy Spirit, it wants to be. The Spirit moved in him, it lit him up just like a spotlight. The local scribes and leaders in the synagogue couldn't stand him. They watched him, listened to him, and decided he was their enemy, as well as God's enemy. He had no respect or love for what God had decreed through Moses. So they hold him up before their court and charged him with some terrible ideas about holy laws, about holy places, about holy customs, which had been passed down to that place and in their families for many, many generations. Luke adds after that they were finished, there was a still small moment of calm. They looked at Stephen in that moment. They saw his face was the face of an angel. That part is not in our passage that Mary read today, nor is the sermon which got Stephen killed. All we heard was his final statement. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you are forever opposing the Holy Spirit just as your ancestors used to. 
the synagogue crew were, in fact, God's enemies. It was all way too much for those leaders of the old church. They had to decide how to get rid of Stephen and feel free of all his accusations. They took him out of the city. They threw rocks at him until they killed him. Stephen and Jesus dead. Is this how we should look at Christian success? We can't convert others to our way of thinking, can we? We may have the oldest, best-looking church building in town. We may reach out kindly and generously to our community. But do we tell the truth of the good news of Jesus Christ so clearly that people want to kill us for doing it? Do you have problems with that like I do? Remember Pilate's question, what is truth? Remember those people we've known who think they're being martyrs when really they're being horribly obnoxious. They like to question your faith until you tell them to go away. They moan right then about how hard it is to be a Christian and serve the Lord these days. Anyway, martyrdom just happens, I think. It's when we get wrapped up in leading God's life and forget to protest ourselves and project ourselves from the shrill voices that surround us. Life rains, rocks on us. Ah, there are many more recent martyrs, people who have lived in the past century, not 20 centuries ago. They died for what they believed. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was born in Germany in 1906. He was a pastor in what was called the Confession Church one of the few Christian communities that were opposed to Hitler when he rose to power in 1933. Bonhoeffer served churches, wrote books, organized a new seminary for his church. In 1939, he became involved with a group who wanted to replace Hitler. On April the 5th, 1943, Bonhoeffer was arrested by the Nazis, hauled off to prison in Berlin. An attempt to kill Hitler in 1944 failed, and Bonhoeffer was easily linked to the effort. He ended up in Schoenberg prison, where he wrote some truly remarkable letters. As he finished a church service on the 8th of April, 1945, he was taken away. He was hanged the next day at Flossenburg Prison. Jonathan Daniels was 26 years old, a seminary student in Cambridge, Massachusetts. He admired Martin Luther King Jr. very very much. Jonathan heard him one night ask for volunteers on the TV. They went, he wanted them to come to Selma, Alabama, to help with the right of all people to vote in March 65. So he ended up in jail in Hayesville, Alabama, after joining a picket line. He was released soon enough, but as he left prison, he knew there was something wrong. He walked with some others to a store 
near the jail. Ruby Sales was a 16-year-old black girl who was coming into the store when a white man with a gun appeared and started to abuse and curse her. Jonathan took the girl away. He was shot and killed instead of the girl. Oscar Romero was an archbishop of the Roman Church in the 70s. He was appointed chaplain to the military and wealthy landowners of El Salvador. The country was run by and for them. One night, looking out of his window, he saw that a very large crowd had gathered. The people in the crowd had decided they were no longer willing to die quietly. They demonstrated for what their lives together needed. They needed justice, education, living wages. He walked out to join them. He was converted that night. Even as the army opened fire and many, many people were killed. He became a great advocate for the people. The military and wealthy called him a traitor, among other things. A short time later, he was taking a funeral for a woman in his congregation when he was shot dead in the sanctuary. We are still in, according to the church calendar, the great 50 days of Easter. We are working still on what it takes to be called an Easter people. It's important for me to remember that this means putting something else ahead of our own safety. I don't think the martyrs wanted to die. It happened as they lived their lives to the fullest, helping others to do just that for themselves. Killing them was a little like the dandelion puffs we will all have in our grass very soon. The more you blow on the puffs, the more the seeds spread. They blew all the way to this place. Blood has been spilled for us. And we do remember that every Sunday. As Easter people, we remember those who died so that we can live life to its fullest. As well as think about the miracle of death turning life into eternal life. Last thought for the day on which we celebrate Christian Family Sunday. In 2 Timothy 1, verse 7, are the words, For the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Thanks, Mom. Love you.
together for the prayers of the people. God of love, today we praise and thank you for the love and support of family. We thank you that during these pandemic times you have kept the church families of Elmville Presbyterian and Knox Floss strong in their faith in you and love for one another, which has meant so much during this time of isolation. We thank you for the many ways people have reached out to others, continuing to be in community while still apart. God of creation, you have gifted us with your world, and we have made a mess of looking after it, being ungrateful for the beauty of the world around us, taking it all for granted. We pray for world leaders as they come together to formulate a plan for restoration and recreation. Help us to enjoy your world and do our part to sustain its wonder and beauty. Always we thank you that we are part of your family, knowing that you love and care for us, regardless of the color of our skin. Help us to reach out to our brothers and sisters and speak up against the injustices we are seeing, even in our own country. Throughout the world, there are countries as well as our own reeling under the pressures of the pandemic. All are in your care. We are thankful for the help arriving in our province and other parts of the country, and for the aid being sent to India. We pray for all hospital personnel who have been stretched to the limit and yet respond to their calling to be there for the sick and dying. Give them added strength and keep them safe. We thank you for the arrival of the different brands of vaccine that bring hope that life will open up again in the not too distant future. We pray that we can do our part to care for the safety of each other and those people essential to our lives who have no choice but to go to work each day. We pray for those experiencing loneliness, illness, grief, anger, family division, financial stress, or increased mental problems during this time of lockdown, that they may be strengthened, knowing that you walk beside them in their struggle. Lord, our sympathy is extended this week to the families of Harold Martin, Bob Todd, and Mary Archer. And we remember those of our church family in need of your special prayer. Lord, you know our needs, and in the silence of our hearts, we pray for each other and for ourselves. Above all, Lord, we pray that we take to heart what Christ has asked us to remember, that we love one another. All this we ask and pray in his name and in the words he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
our blessing and benediction. Whoever you are, wherever you go, whatever your weakness is, God will be with you to hold, to heal, to guide, and to bless. Go then in peace, assured of his love. Amen.